Hi, my name is Zach, this is Harrison, and today we're going to be taking you through the basics of the respiratory examination. Now there are a number of things you should do before any clinical exam. For brevity's sake today, I'll just say clean hands and consent. Start by taking a good look at your patient from the bottom of the bed. Are there any obvious pain or discomfort, or are they comfortable at rest? Now, listen. Can you hear them coughing? <coughs> or wheezing, perhaps? Are they making any noise at all? A silent chest is a worrying thing. This is a good time to measure the respiratory rate, an often overlooked but vital observation. Count breaths over 15 seconds and multiply by 4 to give breaths per minute. Try to avoid letting the patient know that you're doing this, as awareness of one's breathing can alter the result. Now, look in the hands for any peripheral signs of respiratory disease, and take a look at your patient's face for any signs of anemia or hypoxia. Now, let's check the tracheal position. Warn the patient of imminent discomfort, then feel the trachea by placing your index and ring fingers over the clavicle, and palpating the windpipe with your middle finger. Is that trachea in the midline? or is it deviated to one side? Check for lateral displacement of the apex beat for a better idea of whether the respiratory tract has shifted due to thoracic pathology. Now, we make it onto the chest itself. Start by having a good look. Notice anything unusual? Pay close attention to scars and deformities. Now, when examining the lungs themselves, the first important thing to assess is chest expansion. Are both sides rising and falling symmetrically? Or is one side outperforming the other? Make a note of any asymmetry. We can clarify this with a touch of palpation. Place your hands over the patient's chest, like so, so your thumbs are touching. As the patient breathes in and out, watch your thumbs as they move apart. Are both sides still the same, or is there a difference? We now move on to assess what's going on inside the chest. There are three ways to do this, and the first one is percussion. Start by tapping on the clavicles to get a good idea as to what's going on in the apices. Then, continue down the chest, tapping in the intercostal spaces. The lungs should give a healthy resonant percussion note. A dull note suggests an underlying solid mass, while a hyperresonant note may indicate a pneumothorax. Comparing one side to the other is the best way to identify anything abnormal. The second technique at our disposal is tactile vocal fremitus. Now this is often performed incorrectly. The phrase 99 was incorrectly ported from the German 99, chosen for its delightful low-pitched diphthongs. Instead of 99, ask the patient to say blue balloons, or boy oh boy, while you feel over their intercostal spaces. Increased vibration once again suggests underlying consolidation, something more solid than air. Finally, it's time to use your stethoscope. Listen first to the apices by placing the bell of your stethoscope in the supraclavicular fossa. Then, work your way down the chest with the diaphragm, comparing the two sides as you go. Listen for those breath sounds. Do they sound louder? Or quieter than they ought to? Increased breath sounds, once again, suggest consolidation. Do you hear anything else? Wheezes, perhaps? Or crackles? Note what you hear and where you hear it. Finish by sitting the patient forward and repeating those four steps over the back, paying special attention to those always tricky lung bases. Now you're not finished yet. No respiratory exam is complete without a cardiovascular exam, an abdominal exam and a full history, not to mention a peak flow. Yeah, and a sputum sample wouldn't go amiss either. But this is a good place to start, and should give you a good idea as to what's going on on the other side of that chest wall. Finish by thanking the patient and getting them covered back up. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, found it useful, uh, why not subscribe to our channel? You can do it by uh, clicking that button there. You can see some of the other videos in our series on clinical examination, uh, just below me, just down there. And uh, why not send us some helpful feedback? Till next time.